お誕生日をお祝いしてもらえるなんて嬉しいな Hello, this is Timboy752, aka the player who upgrades the All Stars Pass to Premium Grade and Love Life All Stars. And I will be doing my card breakdown featuring the Sweet Rose Pet from the Exchange event, Flowers for Valentine. The Japanese title is Otome no Flower Valentine. The scouting banner is available until Valentine's Day afternoon. I will start off with basic info, my thoughts on the cards, and then the verdict. Sweet Rose Monkey is in line for the banner as a full voltage card. Her base limit stat will start off at 7,894 basic skill, 4,132 base stamina, 6,771 base technique with 20.31% will rate. Her fifth limit stat will end up at 14,137 base appeal, 7,405 base stamina, 12,117 base technique with 36.35% critical rate. Maki's skill and active ability is voltage gain buffer. For skills, she increases voltage gain by 7.8% to 9%, affecting cold cards for 3 notes at 33% chance. For active ability, she increases it by 15%, affecting herself during appeal chances. Her passive ability is appeal plus, affecting cold cards by increasing base appeal by 4 to 5.2%. There are 3 cool cards that use the same skill set as this Maki you are. All of them are from Aqua, Holy Diamond Saya, Weather Wizard Hanamaru, and Autumn of Thanksgiving Ruby. If you have any of those cards, then you are familiar with this set as well. That's why Sweet Rose Maki has upgraded stats from Weather Wizard Hanamaru. The Kurosada sisters cannot beat her in stats, especially Daya, who has a party card with the same skill set. While Maki is good for supporting cold cards, her voltage gain buffer skill is on the attribute side. More effective but shorter range of 3 nodes. She also gets to increase her own voltage gain during appeal chances, a great idea if you want to use her as a scorer expert talent song. Despite the stats, I think Hanamaru is better at buffing voltage gain than Maki as she can help out more cards than her. But if you want to get her just for a Muse alternative, make sure you buy Star Gem and or chocolates for her. This is what she looks like in costume preview. Now, unlike the other two, which we will see shortly, this Maki card, uh, this Maki costume is actually pretty good. Um, she does have, she does have a very wide skirt just to make her uh, look like a princess. As well, she has rose decorations on the chest, as well as parts of her skirt, as well as the one on her hair decoration. I like the trim design as well as the rose patterns going along the dress as well. And lastly, but not the least, the wrist on her right and the evening gown gloves on her left hat. So she is well dressed for Valentine's Day, but eh, I wish everyone would scout for her just for this dress. Who calls upon the bidding of Sweet Rose Yoshiko? Not me, but I'm sure other little demons do. As a Smile SP card, her base stats will start off at 6,956 base appeal, 4,699 base stamina, 7,141 base technique with 36.42% critical rate. Her fifth limit stats will end up at 12,463 base appeal, 8,414 base stamina, 12,790 base technique with 53.37% critical rate. Yoshiko's skill is SP gauge gauge buffer, increasing SP gauge fill rate by 44 to 50%, affecting her strategy for 3 notes at 33% chance. Her passive ability is appeal plus, affecting smile cards by increasing base appeal by more to 5.2%, and her active ability is SP fill, filling SP gauge by 3% of her technique on live show start. The falling angel with the glamorous looks does not usually have the skill set needed to be in the support line. While I adore Yoshiko's illustration, her scoring potential is held back by a high stamina stat, making her even more focused on sustained duty over utilizing critical potential. Heck, she may not score better than Mach even with boosted critical rate. The closest cards that I can reference are Justice Archer Setsuna and Rose Knight Shizuku, who also have the same skill set, but they are way old and the devs did not bring it back recently. For her skills, she can beat or be on par with Venus Moonlit Body, as each have high gain rate but varying ranges. Both target same strategy and have the same attribute focus passive. Her SP fill ability uses technique stats so to have limited increases on her. It is not worth the effort upgrading her active ability, so technically use her for critical scoring and SP fill supporter. This is what she looks like in costume preview. 
now where Maki has uh, contrasting gloves, Yoshiko has the contrasting leggings. Now, she is a um, darker version of Maki's uh, dress, color palette. However, Yoshiko chose the short skirt path and while I do like the design, it's very tempting. What you'll see in the illustration and then if you were to get her as cards is the main emphasis on her legs and also beautiful checkered dark colored gloves. So be in for a delicious dark chocolate treat. The scouting answer for this banner is Boku Imaniko. Being an elegant F3 card, her base stats will start up at 3,868 base appeal, 3,629 base stamina, 4,595 base technique with 28.78% critical rate. Her fifth limit stats will end up at 6,592 base appeal, 6,181 base stamina, and 7,827 base technique with 38.48% critical rate. Nico's skill is SP fill, filling SP gauge by 5-7%. Her passive ability is Appeal Plus, affecting elegant cards by increasing base appeal by 2 to 3.2 percent. And her active ability is SP Gauge Gate Buffer, increasing SP Gauge Fill Rate by 24 percent, affecting elegant cards for 10 notes on F on the first SP burst. For those who are starting off the SP meta, I can think of this Nico as an elegant SP filler supporter, thanks to her reliance on safe attribute. She can do well when it comes to filling SP Gauge and hitting critical notes. If there are early available chances that require SP voltage, that is. Her active ability will shine for those who hold for. I do not think she has the best attribute abilities, but her skill is enough to put on your elegant team until you have powerful SP fillers like two out of S Ellie or Fluffy Goodnight by Kanata. And speaking of Kanata. Sweet Rose Kanata is your Valentine's Day partner. Do you agree or not? I think Emma thinks so. As a gold skill card, her base stats will start off at 5,478 base appeal, 3,129 base stamina, 7,048 base technique with 36.14% critical rate. Her fifth limit stats will end up at 9,816 base appeal, 5,619 base stamina, and 12,620 base technique with 52.86% critical rate. Anna's skill is skill activation rate buffer, increasing skill activation rate by 3.7 to 4.5% for 5 notes, affecting 3rd years at 33% cap. Her passive ability is appeal plus, affecting cool cards by increasing base appeal by 3 to 4.2%, and her active ability is critical power buffer, affecting all cards by increasing voltage gain from critical notes by 2.5% on live shows start at 50% cap. Her skill targets third gears, her passive affects cool cards, and then her active target all cards. What is this mixed up skill set? What Kanata is going for is critical scoring as she has 36 to 53% critical rate, making her a decent performer in critical ACs. Who in the right minds thought it was a good idea to jumble targets that Kanata has to utilize so that everyone can be on the same footing? She has tight team building potential and her skill set is only fully utilized when you have full third gear URs. Cool cards only get the only get the bonus and then everyone else gets their critical power boost. If you have a few full third gear URs on your deck, well good luck. It is an unfortunate case of a bad experiment on Sleepy and Third Gear who had a breakout in her party and festival 2 cards. On the bright side, she is an event UR, so I doubt you may use her a lot costume collection. This is what she looks like in costume preview. Now Baki and Yosko have contrasting gloves and leggings. Jonathan this time have the matching gloves and leggings. She is the even equal of dark and white chocolate and she is the equal of the regular chocolate uh, of the set. Now I really like that the roses are only red. So roses are red, violets are blue, um, beautiful design overall for this Kanata, even though she has misleading stats. Thank you. But I do really love the top hat as the top of her decorations, as well as the twin buds on the back of her hair. So, I really like this costume, but unfortunately, her stats and skill sets got it away. So, that is why I call her the costume collection card for this trio. The first event SR is Kanata's Valentine's Day. I mean Rainbow Waltz Emma. Being an Ashdev Guard card, her base stats will start off at 2,785 base appeal, 
4,331 base stamina and 3,195 base technique with 9.58% critical rate. Her fifth flavor stats will end up at 4,735 base appeal, 7,367 base stamina, and 5,436 base stage sneak with 16.30% critical rate. Emma's skill is Damage Reducer, reducing stamina damage by 8-20% to for 5 health. Her passive ability is Stamina Plus, affecting active cards by increasing base stamina by 2-3.6%. to 3 Her active ability is Shielding, gaining shield by 6.6% of her stamina on appeal to that success. Coincidentally, I remember her and Kanata's New Year Guar cards have been putting them as soulmates for the set, and having her wear the rainbow Waltz dress just makes me wonder if those fourth members have better chemistry than their first year members. If you put limit increases on her during the event, she might be enough to tackle songs with stamina damage nodes, but she will not be as effective as Water Blue Recall, which is one of the candidate SR cards you use in Jingle Bells Gatomana Night Challenge. I'm sure there are a few active songs that have stamina damage nodes ready for Emma, and with a subtle shield for each of your chance success, you have extra time to restore stamina before her shield is completed. Okay, damage reducer card overall. The second event SR is My My Tonight Mari doing the air guitar solo. Being an elegant voltage card, her base stats will start off at 3,910 base appeal, 2,680 base stamina, 3,710 base technique with 11.13% critical rate. Her fifth limit stats will end up at 6,664 base appeal, 4,559 base stamina, and 6,313 base technique with 18.93% critical rate. Mari's skill is Voltage Gain Buffer, increasing voltage gain by 4 to 5.2% for 5 notes affecting elegant cards. Her passive ability is Appeal Plus, affecting elegant cards by increasing base appeal by 2 to 3.2%. Her active ability is Voltage Gain, gaining voltage by 7.6% of her appeal on appeal chance success. maddie has got size in her My Might and Night costume. As her Voltage Gain buffers these days are only effective if you are starting out in the game. This Mari can go for a decent scoring potential even at base limit. If you have elegant cards on her side, she can't lose voltage gain as long as players can comply with a cap. If voltage gain reaches 50 to 61, you know where Mari you know where my light tonight Mari can use. Uh thrilling one way, not to either egg out the one two jump and no brand girls, all on expert difficulty. It's safe to say that this banner is mostly for looks and not the stats. If you want to spend your favorite school idol on Valentine's Day, you may scout on this banner. I can only judge by how the stats were used and the skill sets are effective in the game. For the awards, Maki is a close competitor to Weather Wizard Hanamaru. Yoshiko builds up parity with Venus Moonlight Mati, but her SP fill could have used a different condition to make her useful and not just made her purely for critical scoring. Kanata fell into another mismanaged experimental UR. K-Lab or Minot Games did not learn a lesson from her tropical getaway UR card. I do hope Kanata's date will, with Emma will go well. For the SRs, Nico is an okay elegant SP filler supporter. Just replace her with a UR SP filler once you are once you are scouting as well. Uh, Emma is going to be another key in the active lineup of da damage reducers, albeit in the SR lineup. Mari plays her guitar straight to voltage gain buffing and elegant support. That's all for this video. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell if you want more sheesh videos. I stream games 3 to 4 times a week on YouTube or Twitch at 21BHT. My socials are in the video description below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. See you soon.